Today, we'll be looking at pro Catan strategies that are used in actual tournaments that are so high level, you've probably never even seen them used or will use them yourself. The first high level tactic is to use the year of plenty to intentionally destroy your cards. There are situations where it's extremely beneficial to actually destroy your cards, and here is one of them. We are playing as blue at 8 points, and we just bought the last dev card, which was a road building. With this road building, we will take the longest road the next turn and win the game. Now keep in mind, Grey cannot extend the road any longer, and they're capped at 13 roads, while we are at 12 roads total. Because this is a strong table, we are tracking our opponent's cards, but our opponents are also tracking our cards. So, we have the road building and we're going to win the next turn, but we need to survive. Remember, you cannot play dev card the turn you just bought it. So, Grey is at 9 points with 2 ore and 2 wheat in hand, and they have an unplayed dev card, which is a knight, and we know that because all the dev cards are bought out. If we end our turn, we are guaranteed to lose, as Grey will steal our last ore and build a city to win. So, the solution? We play our year of plenty for 2 ore and use a 3 for 1 port to port 3 ore for a wood. This way, Grey cannot steal from us in order to win. With this, we just increased our chances of winning the game by a lot, as next turn, we're set up to win and they cannot steal an ore from us anymore. The second pro strategy is to play the year of plenty before we roll in order to deny our opponents winning rolls. Most people know you can play a knight card before you roll, but actually you can play any dev card before you roll. Typically, there's no use of playing any dev cards before you roll, except for the knight. But there are a few exceptions, and that is to deny your opponent winning rolls. Another rule that most people don't know, if the bank owes an amount of resources the bank cannot pay, it will not distribute any of that resource on that turn. For example, if the bank owes 6 ore to players, and the bank only has 5 ore, then no one will get any ore on that turn. So here is a pro strategy. We are playing as grey and are at 9 points. Before we roll, we need to track Blue's hand as they're at 9 points and can have some winning rolls. Now after tracking, we can tell Blue wins with a 9 or 10 in order to build a city. Then here's the hard part. We need to track how many resources are in play, or how many are inside the bank. We can calculate this by having perfect tracking. To see how many ore are left in the bank, we need to subtract 19 from the amount of ore in play. We are using 19 because there's 19 of each specific resource in the bank. So the math is 19 minus 6 minus 5 minus 2, which is equal to 6. There's 6 ore left inside the bank. So if we year plenty for 2 ore, there will only be 4 ore left inside the bank. So now if a 9 or 10 rolls, the bank owes 6 ore, but the bank only has 4. Because the bank does not have enough ore, no one will get ore. With this play, we just denied our opponents winning rolls and set ourselves up to win instead. The third pro strategy is to play the Monopoly card before you roll to guarantee yourself the win. Just like playing the Year of Plenty before we roll, there are situations where you need to play the Monopoly before you roll. Here's the situation. The dev card deck is empty. We're sitting at a strong table, and we're tracking our opponent's cards with precision, but they are too. We are playing as Grey. One of our opponents have 8 cards, and one of them is a brick, and that's the only brick inside the game. Sitting at 9 points, we need this brick to win. Also, because the dev card deck is empty, our opponents know we have a Monopoly card. If we roll without playing a Monopoly and roll a 7, our opponent, who's a strong player, would discard their brick so we can't steal it from them to win, nor can we play a Monopoly on brick to win. In order to prevent this scenario, we need to play the Monopoly card before we roll in order to guarantee the win and drop a settlement. Now the fourth pro tip is learning how to get protection from the robber, especially internet robbers. Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network that covers or changes your IP address and adds an extra layer of security when browsing the internet, and that's especially useful on sketchy public Wi-Fi connections. That's what I use Surfshark VPN the most for. It can also help you get around internet censorship in certain regions to access content you typically can't see. Surfshark VPN can also scan your email account for suspicious activity and can check the strength of your password and also has something called Surfshark Search. This is an internet tool that lets you be totally anonymous with no logs, no tracking, and no ads. Surfshark VPN is extremely valuable in today's online world, so I'm really happy to say that Surfshark VPN is offering an 83% off plus 3 months free by clicking the link down below, or using the promo code DELIGHTED at checkout. And if you don't like it, Surfshark VPN offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it. Again, it's 83% off plus 3 months free by using code DELIGHTED or by clicking the link down below. 
Thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. The fourth pro strategy is to play the Monopoly before we roll in order to increase our hand size for padding. Here's the situation. We have eight cards and the win in hand, and we're at nine points, but we can still miss the win if a seven rolls and we have to discard four cards and break the city. However, we can prevent the scenario by monopolying before we roll in order to increase our hand size from eight cards to nine cards. So if we roll a seven, we discard four cards and keep five in order to save the city and guarantee the win. The last tactic is to use the year plenty to help people win races for a massive profit. So here's the situation. We're playing as great and we're currently behind at three points. We have a year plenty. So typically we would year plenty for two ore and build a city. But in this position, we can leverage our opponent's greed for a much better play. If you look at the board, both blue and green are racing for a critical spot, the 410. Since we're a good player, hopefully, we're tracking with precision. We know both of our opponent's hand and how close they are to building the settlement. But our opponents are also strong players and they're tracking each other's hands too. With this year of plenty, we can determine who wins the race and get a strong profit off of it. We can tell blue, hey, I have a year of plenty for wood, but I need a good trade. Now blue might offer two cards, but we can squeeze them for more value of three cards. Two or and a wheat if we're tracking extremely precisely. We have strong leverage here because blue is under a lot of pressure as this is a strong expansion spot and both players have committed two roads. If blue doesn't trade with us this turn, I can always talk with green and trade with them instead. Let's say blue verbally accepts our deal. With this trade, it leads blue to a decisive victory on the race as green does not produce any wood themselves. So we play year plenty and get wood, one for blue. But what's the second card we take? We take a wood. So we do the three for one trade with blue and they're poised to win the race. But that trade was a trap. We intentionally did a year plenty for two wood. Now we can turn around to green and trade with them instead. But this time we can exert even more pressure as green is tracking and they know blue has a settlement in hand. Time is ticking. Luckily for green, green goes before blue. So here we can offer a once in a lifetime deal for green to win the race, but it's going to be expensive. It's pretty reasonable for green to offer multiple cards for the wood, and it can range from anywhere from two cards into a maximum of five cards. It just depends on how desperate green is. Let's just say in this position, we trade away our wood for three cards. So instead of simply doing a year plenty for two ore and dropping a city, we instead year plenty for two wood and leveraged our opponent's greed for much better play and got six desirable cards. If you find these strategies interesting, consider liking the video and subscribing. My channel is all about competitive Catan. I'm delighted and I hope you learned something.